Hello, welcome back to the SMMP Reviews YouTube channel. My name is Brittany. I'm a family nurse practitioner with the SMMP Reviews team. And today we are going to review some of the key points of tuberculosis, also known as TB. We're going to cover the risk factors of TB, the TB skin test results. We're also going to touch on treatment of TB. However, if you want a deeper dive into TB or any other respiratory content, go ahead and check out our review courses. First off, let's talk about who is at higher risk for developing tuberculosis. There are many factors that it could increase a person's risk for developing TB. Some factors include living in close proximity to a person with TB, living in or recently immigrating from areas with high rates of TB, intravenous drug use, working or living in facilities with those at increased risk of TB. Those could include hospitals, shelters for those experiencing homelessness, correctional facilities, and nursing homes to name a few. Make sure to think about those comorbidities as well. Any condition that weakens the immune system could increase a patient's risk for developing a TB infection. These could include conditions like HIV or AIDS, substance use disorders, diabetes, kidney disease, cancer, autoimmune disorders, or a recent organ transplant. If a patient has any of these comorbidities, we need to factor that into our diagnostic reasoning. All right, let's review that TB skin test, which is also called the Mantu tuberculin skin test. This test is performed by injecting a small amount of fluid called tuberculin into the skin, typically on the inside of the forearm. The patient must return within 48 to 72 hours to have the healthcare worker look at the location where the injection was administered. The result depends on the size of the induration of the area of injection. Induration refers to the area that presents as a raised or hardened area in the skin. This is measured and reported in millimeters. Patients with indurated areas will fall into one of three cutoff measurements. That's going to be greater than or equal to 15 millimeters, greater than or equal to 10 millimeters, and greater than or equal to 5 millimeters. So which patients fit into each group? Patients who have no major risk factors for TB would need a TB test result of greater than or equal to 15 millimeters to be considered to have a positive skin test. So who would be in that greater than or equal to 10 millimeter group? This group is going to include those who have recently immigrated from areas with high rates of TB, healthcare workers, or those who work in facilities similar such as like correctional facilities or shelters for those experiencing homelessness. This group also includes patients with those select comorbidities we discussed like diabetes or kidney disease. Our final group is going to be our highest risk group. This would include patients who have a condition that affects the immune system, such as HIV or a, re a recent organ transplant, as well as those who have been exposed to TB. A positive result for this group would be a result of greater than or equal to 5 millimeters. So what's next? How do we proceed if we note a positive skin test result for a patient? A chest x-ray is part of the initial approach to diagnosis, and it's a very useful tool for evaluation for a symptomatic patient. To confirm diagnosis, however, we will need to do a sputum culture. If a patient is diagnosed with TB, a referral to infectious disease should be made, but let's briefly cover TB treatment. There are a couple different re treatment regimens approved for TB. A very common timeline is the six to nine month regimen that involves four medications, including rifampin, isoniazid, pyrazinamide, and ethambutol. For those about to take their exam, a good way to remember these meds is to think of the acronym RIPE, R-I-P-E. Regimens may differ slightly on timeline or medications depending on the specific patient situation. Tuberculosis can be a significant health risk for many patients we care for. It's also a topic that may come up on your certification exam, so definitely one you want to review so that you can feel comfortable answering those questions. Our review courses are a great way to get a deeper dive into that respiratory content. Also, if you're looking for support in your studying, we have a free Facebook page for those who are preparing for certification exams. 
And here are the references we use for this video. Thank you so much for being here with us again today. Go ahead and hit subscribe so you don't miss out on our upcoming videos.